we've had some queries about how to um, design or develop a splint template like this um, and in particular how you can um, make sure it's the right size for your patient's hand. Um, if you just want to copy that template feel free to take a screenshot and um, uh, trace or convert that um, how you, however you wish, print it out, do whatever you want with it. Um, but <clears throat> trying to get the sizing right um, for a big hand or a small hand, um, I, I just keep a couple of templates, one for large hands, one for small hands and you can adjust as you go. But <clears throat> these, the, the shape of this is designed um, to fit a hand a certain way, um, to end up with a thumb spiker splint roughly like this. Um, so this edge here, the top edge, is going to be what wraps around the IP joint of the thumb. Um, <clears throat> and so you know, if you get a tape measure, you can measure the circumference around the IP joint. And then if you're making a template, um, then that is going to be just a nice gentle curve, um, IP joint measurement from one to the other. Um, <clears throat> this measurement here, straight down from your top curve to your bottom curve, um, through the midline, um, that measurement is going to be from IP joint, I'll try to get it, wedge it in there, it's through there, through the web space <clears throat> um, of, the th um, of the thumb. So it actually goes from the IP joint crease to the distal palmar crease <clears throat> at the base of the index finger. Um, <clears throat> if we look at that on the splint, it's this part through here, um, from the IP joint to the MCP joint distal palmar crease. And the index finger um, and so if we measure that in centimeters you can just go from midline here and you know, diagonally across the page the same number of centimeters um, and then I would just draw a couple of straight lines almost parallel heading up towards that midline the next measurement you need to take the final measurement to take really is this distance here which will be equal to that distance there because those sides are going to come around together and form this seam down the radial border of the splint <coughs> um, and so that is the distance from the thumb IP joint down the side of the thumb on the radial aspect to the CMC joint <coughs> at the base of the thumb um, and so that distance gets converted onto the page here and here <coughs> Um, and then it's just a matter of making tabs, something like this, just slightly tapered because the, um, your hand is narrower on the, um, on the ulnar side than it is on the radial side. So it's going to be tapering slightly towards where the tabs are going to meet on the ulnar and dorsal side of the hand. Something like this. And there's your splint. Um, so that will be roughly the same size as my hand, or the right size for my hand. If it's a smaller hand, then you're going to start with a smaller IP joint. Um, you have a small little IP joint here, um, a small web space, and some small <coughs> um, measurements like that. I hope that makes sense. I hope that um, it answers your questions. Please feel free to let us know in the comments um, if you have any further questions and happy splinting.